Yeah, you definitely saw Are Joey. Are you scared for your daughters? At any point in your life, do you uh, do you think about them when you're on the road? Yeah, I, I'm afraid. George is just such a sensitive, like really, like Georgia is the kid. For those of you that don't know, like I, I always tell stories about Isla, but George is the kid that when when Mercy comes over to the house for Christmas Eve, Georgia tracks her the whole time, stays with her, plays with her, takes her into the room. Remembers the shit that she had as a little girl and goes, "Hey Mercy, you want to try this? Hey, what, why don't I come up, hop up on the thing and play the piano?" And Mercy also, Mercy's a, a like a comet. She comes into that house and that is her home. She goes into Isla's room, starts going through her stuff, just walks around, comes out, talks to everyone, makes herself a plate, sits up on her dad's lap. Dude, Mercy is a comet. She she's a lot like she's a a mix of Isla and Georgia. Isla had that energy. But Mercy's also super sensitive, like very like there was another little kid there uh, this year and Mercy was taking the time to talk to her, make sure she's OK. Fucking bang the head at the end of the night. I know. <laughs> I'm sitting there and boom. And when you hear boom, you just <laughs> on go, a wood floor, you just do the sign of the cross. I hope that ain't my kid. And the kid was in shock, you know. But it's weird when she comes over how Mercy went, it's not it wasn't me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia does take care of Mercy. Georgia does. Has that sympathy. Isla don't give a fuck. Isla, yeah. Isla just... Isla, Isla just, locked her door. I go, what are you doing? She goes, Mercy's here. I got to keep her out of my stuff, Dad. <laughs> I go, Isla, open your fucking door. She, the... Uh, but yeah, the Isla... I, I'm George is just so sensitive. She's going to get her heart broke really bad. First guy she falls in... First guy she dates, she'll fall in love with and just get her heart broke. And I know that feeling because I'm that kind of person. And that's going to be the fucking, we just got to get her through that first break. Obviously, if you don't know it, Georgia is you. Oh, without yeah. Without the fucking t- t- Tito's. Yeah. Georgia is you without the Tito's. She's very level-headed. I can tell that's how you were when you were younger. Yeah. She, does she walk to that fucking bus thing in the morning? No. You both yeah, drive, we drive back we, and we forth. drive both of them now. I worry about my daughters, and I worry about what would, what would happen. Oh, Mercy's going to be so fucking fine. That kid, that kid's got got that Oprah gene where, like, nothing's going to hold her back. She, there's certain, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this book called uh, Coddling of the American Mind, and they're saying that the phrase that kind of stuck with me was this phrase about um, this, I guess, guy that worked for Obama said, when they were talking about kids being oversensitive and getting outraged and... And he said, I want to teach you to deal with adversity. I don't want to pave the jungle for you. I want you to be able to figure out the jungle. If I take all the weights out of the gym, it's no longer a gym. The weights are there because it sucks. And that's what you got to do. And there's certain kids, you need your kids to find adversity. And and I'll be, if I may have made any mistake, it's been trying to protect my kids and not let them run into as much adversity. I think that's a big fault of like, the kind of parent I am, I think Leanne shows them more adversity. Says, you know, hey, if you want, go to Menchie's. You girls go by yourself. And I'm like, no, there's kidnappers out there. She's like, they're going to be fine. You did it when you were a kid. I was someone that can take adversity on the chin and deal with it. And Mercy's that same person. Mercy is, she's got your gene. I don't think so. Mercy's very sensitive. Really? Yeah. Dude, she runs around our parties like literally like she's selling cars. Like the like, she just is so rough and tumble. Do you remember one of my favorite stories? This is my favorite story about your daughter. I'm never. We talk about this once once a month. This comes up with my friends. Two Christmases ago, uh, I get I get drunk super fast, and I'm I'm a, too drunk, and then so I go into my closet to take a nap. I take a 15 minute nap. I disappear for 15 minutes. I wake up. And I realized I need to jump in the pool. I need to get, I need to like sober up. I'm going to jump in the pool. So I throw on a Speedo. By the way, there's like 60 people at my house, right? Joey's family, all our friends, all the kids. I throw on a Speedo. <coughs> I, I come running out and I jump in the pool. And immediately Isla jumps in the pool. And then this kid Carter jumps in the pool. And then this kid Max jumps in the pool. And then Georgia jumps in the pool. Everyone starts jumping in the pool. And all of a sudden you see Mercy. And she's looking at the pool. And Joey goes, are you going to do it? And she sprints up to the pool and stops. And she goes, no, 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 daddy. It's too cold. And Joey goes, come on, Mercy. And she goes, ah. And everyone's going, Mercy. And she starts looking around, almost like Hulk Hogan, like, oh, oh. And then goes, no, 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 no. 
and then turns to Joey, smiles, and jumps into the pool. It is so damn cold. What, what did she say before she jumped? Wait, what did she say? Hold my ring. Hold my ring. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she took. She had clothes on, Dude. sneakers, <laughs> the whole thing. Hold my. And out of the whole thing, she goes, "Okay, Daddy." She looks. She looks. She goes, "Hold my ring," and she jumps in. <laughs> And we fucking died. Dude, Hold the my fucking ring. place lost it. You got to realize there's 20 kids in the pool. And we got this one like five, five-year-old on the edge. I mean, working the crowd like Hulk Hogan. Like, should I give him the pile driver? And everyone's like, come on, Mercy. She goes, no, 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 no. And, every, and then all the moms like, you don't have to. And she's like... Looks at Joey, hold my ring, and just jumps. The place went fucking nuts. I thought because she was at the tip, and she you could see her little fingers were moving. Like she was (laughs) nervous about it. She wanted to jump in. She had peer pressure on her. She (laughs) wanted to swim. You know, she wanted to prove a point. But if you, I know Mercy's little head, something was going on. Yeah, (laughs) and finally she let us know, hold the ring. (laughs) Hold my ring. Forget the sneakers. Forget the socks. Forget my underwear. Forget the pants I got on, yeah. the shirt, the jacket. Oh, forget all that shit. <laughs> it's just hold the ring. Dude, that made us. And then I, this year she came over and I go, hey, Mercy, you jumping in the pool tonight? She goes, oh, no. Because <laughs> she didn't know it was going to be as cold as it was. She she jumped in and it's like 50 degrees. And she popped up just, you know, that look you just. <gasps> when your whole body you yeah. your fucking bones. <laughs> oh, no. I worry about my mercy a lot. I worry about how to raise her, how to, you know, you see these girls in Hollywood and you've seen, you've been here a long time. Yeah. And you see that hole. You see that hole and you got to figure out how to fill that fucking hole, you know? Yeah. When women come up to me and tell me they want to be a star, that's that, that that's not normal. You know, there's got to be a work pattern. There has to be all these things. And there's times I like her at her school, but there's times I don't like that school because of who else goes there. Other than the parents. And what they're talking about. It's like how Josh Wolf said they pulled this kid out of the school when he went to a kid's party and the alligator before he got killed was there. Oh, Steve Irwin? Yeah. He goes, I went to a kid's party. When they went to Carpenter? Yeah. Because I went to a kid's party and the guest was Steve Irwin with the alligators there. And he goes, and then I took my kid out of that school when he had a party and they gave away bags at the end, uh, party favors. Yeah. And the kid looked at the bag and threw it back at Josh. And he goes, last party we went to, they gave us Nintendos, like the games, or well, those expensive games. Yeah. And Josh is like, I got to pull her out of that. I got to pull him out of that, this environment. That's, yeah. But I try to toughen her up. I show her Narcos. <laughs> She watches Narcos with me. Yeah. I had her watching uh, Sopranos a little bit. <laughs> she doesn't get the curse words. She won't say them. Ten Planet Kush, it drains the lactic motherfucking acid. People won't cop to it. The health specialists say, no, that doesn't happen, Joey. Yes, it fucking does. I got friends in Harvard, bitch. I'm like God Brooks. I got friends in high places, motherfuckers. <laughs>